and another great athlete. He's a New Yorker. Growing up, everybody loved Clark Gillies. If you were an Islander fan, you knew who Clark Gillies was. And a lot of people are posting up his pictures at Old Nassau Coliseum, even in Brooklyn when he went to see and had the opportunity to check out the Islanders in Brooklyn. To me, I never had the opportunity to have a conversation with Clark Gillies. I actually skated with Clark Gillies when I was a teen. I played against the Islanders, the 70-80 Islanders, Long Island All-Stars against the championship Islander team, and Clark Gillies did play in the game, so I never really had the opportunity to talk with him, but I took a couple of pictures with him on the ice with the Islander team. That was something that I remember Clark Gillies as, but what you think of Clark Gillies as is a leader. He was the leader of that Islander team, and he was a mean player. Everybody that has talked about Clark Gillies since he's passed away said that he was so vicious, and he, he played with his heart on his shoulders, and, and just who he was as a leader for the New York Islanders, those championship teams, those those teams of dominance, the late 70s, early 80s. When you talk about the, the greatness of, of a defenseman, and that's what Clark Gillies was, he wasn't the goal-scoring defenseman. He wasn't that guy that was going to score 200 goals, and he went to the Hall of Fame because of that. He went to the Hall of Fame because of his ability of leadership, his ability to win. He always played the game hard, and that's what Clark Gillies will be remembered as. And he passed away at a very young age. When you try to compare and contrast some of the great Islanders of all time, Clark Gillies would be in my top five. And obviously Mike Bossy and Bobby Nystrom, but the guys that stood up and, and really stood into the Islander culture, why you wanted to be an Islander from the 70s and the 80s, Clark Gillies was the name that everybody wanted to compare and contrast to, Speedy. Yes, yeah, so the heart and soul of that core of that Islanders team. Obviously, they had all the, the big-name players, but Clark Gillies, like you were saying, the toughness, the physicality, the leadership that he brought, really wasn't known as this offensive juggernaut. He could score on occasion, he could pass on occasion, but he was really the, the physical guy. Again, I'm not an Islander fan, but I always respect physical hockey, and I think it's something that really has been lost a lot in today's game, and Clark Gillies in that era of hockey was really the heart and soul when it comes to physical hockey, that Islanders core, that homegrown core that they had with the dynasty they had with the four Stanley Cups in a row. Al Arbor, one of the greatest coaches in NHL history. Which Clark really Gillies. redefined forechecking. Al Arbor really redefined what forechecking was in the NHL, and that had a lot to do with Clark Gillies Absolutely. And, and the way the Islanders played. For those that don't know, Clark Gillies has one of the coolest middle names, too. His middle name is Jethro. Jethro but, Toll! Yes. Fitting for an enforcer, but definitely a guy that definitely will be missed in the hockey community. One of the greatest enforcers of that time one of the greatest leaders and one of the nicest guys in that hockey community for sure. It's crazy when you hear some of the players say how mean he was on the ice, but off the ice everybody and anybody that's ever met him said he's one of the nicest, sweetest guys and every time somebody wanted to take a picture with him or get an autograph, he was so gracious to give you that opportunity. There are other Islanders that are not like that, aka somebody that likes to smoke cigarettes, Mr. Mike Bossy, but that's a whole nother story. He was the captain as well, 77 to 79, and again, four Stanley Cups in a row. He played 14 years with the Islanders from 1974 to 1988. And uh, according to this report, he died of cancer at age 67. Also, another important face to New York sports and Long Island sports for the last 30, 35 years. And and losing a, a Samaritan, a great player of that magnitude, again, to the Gillies family, may he rest in peace. And I hope Islander fans will have the opportunity to remember some someone as special and as great as Clark Gillies. Why don't we get into the Islanders, who are playing unbelievable hockey. Thank God, because in the first, what, five weeks of the season, the Islanders were tortured with injury and COVID-19. The game should have been called earlier in the season, with COVID hitting the Islanders and, and some of the players getting knocked out. Nine players at one time got knocked out, and then they were bringing up players that shouldn't even be in the NHL. And the Islanders went on almost an 11-game losing streak uh, without getting a point, and it really set the Islanders back. They're still slowly but surely moving up in the Metropolitan Division. They're very far from the lead board. Uh, the Carolina Hurricanes completely dominated the Rangers the other night. Yeah. And the Washington Capitals and the New York Rangers, who would have thought the Rangers would be in the top of the Metropolitan Division. Pittsburgh's now surpassed Washington. So, yeah, so. Pittsburgh playing great hockey right now. So the Islanders are now playing catch-up. They have a lot of games in hand with a lot of these teams that are ahead of them. Not as much to catch up to them, but they have like four or five games in hand uh, with the Rangers, the Washington Capitals, the Hurricanes. The Islanders got to continue winning, and that has a lot to do with goaltending and what Sorokin has done this year, even with the the defensive injury, defensive lapses with Barry Trotz, who would have thought that Barry Trotz's defense would completely lapse, but it has been a lapsing 
problem for the Islanders this year. This goaltender, Sorokin, their young goaltender, who they signed uh, a year and a half ago, is slowly but surely taking over as the starting goaltender for this Islander team. It's no longer Volamov. He is the guy. He's the go-to guy in the net. And if the Islanders want to win moving forward, he, Speedy, is going to be a big part of where this team is going to go. Yes, this is a good test for him this year at his first full season to overcome that kind of adversity, too, that I, I think is really going to help him grow his game long term. You talked about all the injuries and the COVID, also the travel lag that they had to go through in the beginning of the season, playing all those road games. That's a big test for a young goaltender right away, and he's been up to the challenge in so many different ways. When you talk about all the defensemen that have gone down, all these young combinations, like you were saying, players that weren't expected to be called up this year, all of a sudden getting the call, and guys like Robin Sala, who scored his first goal this week, playing prominent roles in top defensive pairings, second defensive pairings, and making that kind of thing work. Even though this, the whole system has been a little down from where we know Barry Trotz's physicality and defense to bring, again, they've had a lot of issues trying to deal with all these injuries, all these COVID guys all at once, and then it seems like when somebody else comes back, somebody else goes down. It's kind of like the, what the Mets have dealt with year in and year out. It seems like every time somebody gets hurt for the Mets, then somebody else comes back, and then someone else gets hurt again. The Islanders are kind of dealing with that between the injuries and the COVID this year, but they still got a shot. They, they're right now have seven games at hand on the Penguins. They have eight games at hand on the Rangers and Washington. When it comes to the wild card, they have four games at hand on the Bruins. They're right now 14 points behind the Bruins. That's right now the second wild card. And even Toronto's not really a sure thing either. There are 37 games played, 51 points. The Islanders right now trailing them by 17. So we'll see if they Speak of the devil, they're playing them tonight. They put on, on a good challenge. And Sorokin has to play in more of these double back-to-back games. If the Islanders are going to depend on their goaltending as they move forward, it's no longer Volamo. Volamo last year was a Venzina Trophy candidate. He was one of the best goalies in the league. But ever since his injury, he hasn't been the same goalie. And coming back even this year, he hasn't been the same. And the Islanders, with a team like the Toronto Maple Leafs and other teams that are right now in the Metropolitan Division that they're chasing, they need to win these games. Especially against the Toronto Maple Leaf team, let's be honest, they don't like A.K. John Tavares, who completely dominated in the first game of the season where they shut out the Islanders. Right. They need to play their game against these best, these good teams in the Eastern Conference. So the Islanders need to continue playing the way they are. They finally have over a 500 record, something they haven't had all season right. long. They're playing their game. Now, Barry Trotz has got to get their troops moving forward, getting stronger d- defensively. Pulak's coming back. They're in a good position right now. If they continue winning and teams continue losing, where they can actually catch up. And, and even if they're the 8th seed or 7th seed, who mm-hmm. would want to play the Islanders in the first round? Not the Rangers, not the Capitals, not the Penguins. And definitely not the Leafs if it comes down to that. <laughs> as far as the Rangers are concerned, there's really nothing to say bad about the Rangers. They're playing great hockey, great goal scoring from Chris Kreider, who's on a four-game goal scoring streak. He's unbelievable. He's having his best season. Maybe it's because of the coach. a bit of Jad starting to play very well. The only person that hasn't played at the top of his game yet, which I believe his game will start to peak as the season progresses, is Panarin. But Panarin's still having a decent season. He's just not having a Panarin season. He should have Chris Kreider's goals. He should have 24, 23 goals right. as we go into the second half of the season. I will say this about Chris Kreider. For all the Ranger fans that were trying to push him out of New York and Mm -hmm. try to trade him, I'm sure Ranger fans are not doing that anymore, Speedy. (laughs) No. I remember at that time, too, when he was on that trade block two years ago, I was saying don't trade him because he's the only physical forward the Rangers have. And he wasn't really known for his goal scoring. He was always more of a great playmaker, great vision on the ice, and could hit. And the Rangers didn't really have any other forwards that could hit outside of these stereotypical fourth-line guys. But now, with Gallant's system, the goal scoring really has come out of him, too, where he's scoring a lot of the tough goals. He's getting to shoot the puck a lot more because other guys are really spacing. They have other guys that maybe are not having the prolific goal scoring years but have had great years passing spacing the ice and that's what you see with a lot of these young guys we've seen Lafreniere kind of out with COVID right now but we've seen other guys on those third and fourth lines step up too guys like Ryan Strom now trying to get a new contract he's starting to play well and even on the defense you're really seeing growth from a lot of these young defensemen Andre Miller Braden Schneider who just came up recently has played very well to start the season too so that's a good sign for the Rangers right now they just lost a tough one against Carolina who's I think a better team than them still but seven and three in their last ten games you got to give them a lot of 
credit the way they've played. And they've won in a lot of different ways, too. Now, coming back in the third period the way they did against the Leafs as well, doing a lot of good things. And even though their goal differential is not great, it's still good for them to win close games, too. Also, they have a great goaltender who's arguably one of the top three goalies in the league right now, Igor Sestorkin. And to me, he has to stay healthy. The Rangers need to keep their players healthy. And he is an important piece. If the Rangers have any chance in the playoffs, now, this is still a team that's still trying to figure out who their identity is and what their identity is. With Gallant being there, this might be a season when it comes to the playoffs, just like the Islanders, where you're going to really put your foot in the door and try to figure out who you are. So this might not be the year for the Rangers to win a Stanley Cup, but it might be a a year where you're going to get to know who they are as a team as they progressively grow with Gallant as their coach.